Kappel family. Welcome to Coffee and Praise. Today is Monday, September 28th, and um, I'm excited that you're taking a couple minutes out of your week to begin your week with worship and praise. So, um, today is going to be all about the goodness of God. Um, that's what our short little live is going to be about today. It's not going to be terribly long, mainly because today um, Alan and I get to go and um, have our big, you know, mid-pregnancy anatomy scan and find out um, the sex of the baby and all of that really exciting stuff. And that's in just a little while. So we're excited about that. That's definitely a blessing in our life that we're so thankful for. And for those of you that have been following along with Coffee and Praise the last couple of weeks, you know that I've had trouble finding the mug I wanted to use for this, but I found it. Alan made sure it made it through the dishwasher, and it's um, my Blessings mug. And so that is my coffee for Coffee and Praise today. It's just a regular cup of coffee with, you know, creamer out of my fridge. Um, I'd love to hear what you're drinking today or what... Um, your favorite coffee house or is whenever you go to your favorite local coffee shop like in Greensboro a special blend or my favorite here in Jamestown um, Blue House Bakery um, or Starbucks or whatever your favorite coffee house order is leave it in the comments so that I know you're here and um, say hello that way and I'll put mine in the comments also um, Today we're going to be looking at two songs, one that we did in worship yesterday, Good, Good Father by Chris Tomlin. Um, it's a praise song that's been around for a while now, and it's um, it's got some serious staying power because it affirms, you know, something about the very nature of God. And then a song um, that I learned when I was very, very young, and maybe you did too, God is so good. And so those are the two songs that we're going to look at. Um, we're going to be looking at scriptures from Exodus and 2 Timothy this morning, and we're talking about the goodness of God. So let's get started. Um, yesterday in worship, Pastor Brenda talked about um, the idea of not living life in fear and committing the sin of sloth or like you know, spiritual and mental laziness because of your fear and instead using the talents and gifts that God has given us. And one way that she taught us um, yesterday that we can be assured that we have what it takes is because of the assurance found in the Bible of the goodness of God. That when we build our lives on the goodness of God, and we begin to look for the goodness of God in our lives, it is easier and we are empowered to live life without fear using our gifts and talents. And I thought that was um, a very powerful message, especially for the times that we're living in right now. So I wanted to focus on um, songs that talked about the goodness of God and that strong foundation and not having a spirit of fear. Um, and then there was one illustration that she used that illustrated this very well and she talked about all the little blessings that we see in our in our lives um, whether it's you know admiring the beauty of leaves falling outside or um, small miracles of waking up on time um, that when when these things happen we are bumping into the goodness of God that when we start to look for it all day, every day, we bump into the goodness of God, and we are reminded and empowered to live into that goodness and live without fear. Um, David Jeremiah, I was reading about when I was preparing for this, said that when we talk about the goodness of God, we're talking about something that is innate and part of the very foundation of God's being. And, and God's um, personhood and who God is. Um, I wish I had kept his page open. I don't think I did. So I wanted to find um, one of those foundational verses, and I think that is in Exodus chapter 34. Pastor Brenda has um, preached on this several times and reminded us that this phrase that we're about to read 
is um, throughout the Bible. It's in there dozens of times, this reminder of who God is at God's very core. So I'm going to start reading in um, Exodus chapter four, 34. I'm going to start reading in verse 2, and I'm going to read for a little bit. This is when God has told Moses to come up to the mountains with the tablets that he's prepared, and God's going to tell Moses the most important things that the Israelites need to know about God and need to know about their relationship with God. And he write, and God says to Moses, Be ready in the morning and come up on Mount Sinai. Present yourself to me there on the top of the mountain. No one is to come with you or be seen anywhere on the mountain. Not even the flocks and herds may graze in front of the mountain. So Moses chiseled out two stone tablets like the first ones and went up to Mount Sinai early in the morning as the Lord had commanded him. And he carried the two stone tablets in his hands. Then the Lord came down in the cloud and stood there with him and proclaimed his name, the Lord. And he passed in front of Moses proclaiming, The Lord, the Lord, the compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger, abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness, maintaining love to thousands and forgiving wickedness, rebellion, and sin. And he does not leave the guilty unpunished. He punishes the children and their children for the sin of the parents to the third and fourth generation. Moses bowed to the ground at once and worshiped. Lord, he said, if I have found favor in your eyes, then let the Lord go with us. Although this is a stiff-necked people, forgive our wickedness and our sin and take us as your inheritance. Then the Lord said, I am making a covenant with you. Before all your people, I will do wonders never before done in any nation in all the world. The people you live among will see how awesome is the work that I, the Lord, will do for you. So there's that one line in there. It's the very first thing when Moses gets up to the mountain, when God comes to be with Moses. God announces who he is to Moses at the very start of that interaction. And he says, The Lord, the Lord, a compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness, maintaining love to thousands, and forgiving wickedness, rebelliousness, and sin. Um. I think it's awesome that, that that compassionate, slow to anger, abounding in steadfast love and goodness is almost like in this instance, in this scripture, it's like God's title. Like, you know, um, like, like royal families have titles. Elizabeth, Queen of England, and all these other places that I don't remember, blah, blah, blah. This is like how God announces himself to Moses. God, the compassionate God. Gracious God, slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness. And so, that bearing that scripture in mind, what I like so much about the song Good, Good Father by Chris Tomlin is that the chorus is just a simple proclamation of this very fact of who God is. You're a good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. I am loved by you, just like it says in Exodus. God abounds in love and has shown his love to many. I am loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. Um, some people don't like the repetitiveness of praise songs, but I think in this instance, with Good, Good Father, that repetition of it's who you are, who you are, who you are, who I am, who I am, who I am is so important because repetition is how we learn. Repetition is how we internalize important truths, um, whether that's, you know, your mom telling you not to cross the road without holding her hand or the goodness of God and being loved by God is part of who you are in the same way that God being good is part of who God is. So um, that's why I love Good, Good Father. It's a simple song. It doesn't have that many words. It's easy to sing. Moving on to the um, second thing, because we have this promise of the goodness of God um, and this foundation, and we are empowered to live lives 
living into the gifts that God has given us. I want to look back at a scripture passage that we had on our homecoming Sunday, um, September 13th. So a couple weeks ago, um, Pastor Brenda used this passage as part of her homecoming message. And I think it dovetails perfectly with this um, message that we had yesterday and that we're talking a little bit about this morning. And it's from 2 Timothy, very short passage, um, chapter 1, verses 6 and 7. 2 Timothy 1, verses 6 and 7. And it says, Therefore I remind you to stir up the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. So I encourage you to live this week um, with not a spirit of fear, but to live into the goodness of God, um, have a spirit of power, of love, and a sound mind. As we, Before we close with prayer, I want us to sing the song, God is So Good. I put a link to the lyrics and a little bit more information about that song in the um, description of the video. This is a song so many people learn when they're very, very small. It's a song um, that originated actually in Africa, and it was a traditional song um, back before 1960, um, sung in Africa, um, brought to the United States, and immediately, you know, kind of caught on here. And just like in Good, Good Father, where we have that repetition, in the song God is So Good, we have that same repetition. God is so good. God is so good. God is so good. He's so good to me. Um, as we sing those words over and over again, that reminder of who God is and who we are in God is just more and more deeply um, ingrained in our hearts. There, um, on that webpage, if you click that link, you can also see um, the words in Spanish, Swahili, Portuguese, and Lugandan languages. You can also see scripture references, um, historical context for the song, and um, other and information about the author, or in this case, probably the translator. Let's sing. God is so good. God is so good. God is so good. He's so good to me. He loves me so. He loves me so. He loves me so. He's so good to me. I praise his name. I praise his name. I praise his name. I praise his name. He's so good to me. Let's close in prayer. Good, good God. We thank you for who you are at your very core. That you are compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness. God, may we go this week um, looking for those glimpses of your goodness, bumping into your goodness in our everyday lives. And God, as we are reminded over and over of your goodness, as you repeat your love to us over and over this week, we pray that that would empower us, that your love and goodness would empower us to live a life not in fear, but stirring up and living into the gifts that you have given each of us so that we can show Christ to the world. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. I hope you have an awesome week. Don't forget, put your coffee house order in the comments so that we can all see what we like when we go grab some coffee.
Have an awesome day.